Hello, everybody. It's Chris Jarvis here. If you haven't seen me before, where have you been? For the last 27 years, I've been on Children's BBC, latterly CBeebies before that, the broom cupboard. And I feel like I'm back in it now, really, in this little space here with uh, stuffy over there. Or in a window. We didn't have a window in the broom cupboard. But before we get started, I want to say um, my very best wishes and also those of CMC to Michael Rosen, who gave the opening keynote at the CMC two years ago. Last weekend, Michael emerged from hospital, from intensive care at Whittington Hospital in North London after 47 days. So um, yeah, he's been very poorly and we wish him all the best for a speedy recovery. Welcome to you all. We've currently got hundreds of people watching and participating, which is absolutely marvellous. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is the children's media community in action. Let's thank all the patron sponsors who are backing these CMC webinars. They're on the screen now. BBC Children's, CITV, Daryl McQueen, NBC Universal, and the Elf Factory. Thank you very much. This is the fourth Friday webinar, and just to keep you up to date, here are the next two. The first will offer two research perspectives into what the likes of Apple, Netflix, Amazon and Disney Plus are up to, from Ampere Analysis, who have in-depth studies of their catalogues and the commissioning and buying trends, and from Kids Know Best, who are looking at how children and families react to their brands and what they have to offer. And after that, on the 26th of June, the last webinar before CMC proper, it is sponsored by Animation UK and produced by Beth Parker from Animated Women. It'll look at whether the successful relocation of so many animation companies to remote working means greater flexibility in work practice and future, and what the implications of that might be for disadvantaged groups, particularly for women in the animation workforce. And of course, the really hot news is that the online version of CMC, a week of amazing content, workshops, keynotes, masterclasses, commissioner conversations, plus masses of extra content for you to build your own conference schedule, is all coming our way from the 6th to the 10th of July. You can register now, and if you like what you're experiencing in these webinars, then CMC Online will have it in bucketfuls. We're putting the link into the chat right now. There you go. Um, so you can register. And if you do nothing else, if you do nothing else, watch our lovely promo. Oh, yes, with a wonderful voiceover available now from Voice Shop. Oh, now I've been told we have 200 participants. Thank you for joining us back to today. This webinar, um, if you want to watch it all over again and enjoy it all over again is what we say in television, you can see it on the CMC YouTube channel by Sunday evening. That's when it will be posted there. If you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss any of the new things when they're uploaded. Today's event has been graciously produced by David Heslop, an exec by Tim Patterson from the CMC Advisory Committee. Also, big thanks to Darren, Greg and Joe and Jackie, everyone working behind the scenes. I'll be interviewing BBC Children's Head of Content, Cheryl Taylor, and we want plenty of questions from you. Now, the only way to send those questions in is by using the Q&A button. I'm going to press my now. There we go. Don't send questions using the Zoom email. Nobody is reading them. You'd be wasting your time. The Q&A button is the only thing that will works. After the webinar is over, we're going to experiment by opening up some chat in the Children's Media Conference Facebook group. It's the equivalent of meeting up in the bar to talk about questions after. In fact, we've actually christened it the Greg's Arms, so um, not to be confused by where you get a, a pasty from and a vegan sausage roll. No, the Greg's Arm, it's a wonderful place full of G&Ts and it's all on Greg, which is marvellous. Now, if you've got any extra questions for Cheryl and her team then please post them there and Michael Towner and Melissa Harding who are commissioning execs for CBBS and CBBC uh, respectively and also um, looking at questions will be Sarah Muller who's uh, uh, particularly looking at things about acquisitions they'll be going into the group at some point over the next few days and we'll um, have a few answers for you so we're calling it asynchronous social networking give it a go 
everybody should be doing it. One final piece of housekeeping and then I shall shut up. After the chat with Cheryl, we're going to do the usual CMC thing of adding a bit of extra creative pizzazz with our second in our Inner Child series. Um, author and series consultant on the new CBeebies animation, Jojo and Gran Gran, um, Laura Henry Elaine will be here to talk about her creative origins. That's coming up very, very soon in this webinar. So, joining us today is Cheryl Taylor, BBC Children's Head of Content. Cheryl is responsible for commissioning all content for CBBC, CBeebies, um, be it online, dramas, animation news, interactive content. Um, and before she was CBBC controller, preschool commissioner, and even further back, she had a big hand in bringing a whole raft of classic comedies to our screen. So we have her to thank for things like Cat Gavin and Stacey, Drop Dead Gorgeous, and Spaced. Quite the backstory, ladies and gentlemen. So here to today to discuss not only BBC Children's commissioning plans for the year ahead, but also how the current unprecedented unprecedented unpleasantness, it's easy for me to say, has affected commissioning from budgets to acquisitions to the raft of ingenious lockdown content that has already begun airing on CBBC, CBBC, CBBC <laughs> Radio and BBC iPlayer. Thank you for logging in. Cheryl, hello. Hi, first Chris. <laughs> nice to see you. First things first, how are you and how's your family doing and how has anti-social distancing affected your work life um gosh that's a lot of questions all in mm. one sentence um well it's it's i'm sure everyone knows it's all been very um interesting hasn't it and um the first thing i should say is that all of the zoom meetings that we have to do have affected my voice because i'm one of those people i think i think i'm on camera so i think <laughs> i speak a bit too loudly so i'm really trying to do that thing have you seen graham norton when he does his show and brings in all those people on his TV from around the world and he's preternaturally calm because he obviously knows how to preserve his voice. So if you right. hear me starting to shout, just go, whoa, Neddy, calm down. <laughs> um, I'd say that the, the, it's, it's an interesting times. I know it's very difficult for lots of people, um, but I have to say my family are being real troopers. Um, I've become quite good at swing ball um, and I've done the uh, one thing that I've never done before, but I've always wanted to do as a kind of mum is make things like shepherd's pie and put them, you know, like in a tin foil kind of, you know, pot and put it in the freezer for next time. And I've never done that before. And last week I did that. So I'm feeling quite proud of myself. <laughs> good for um, you. Swing ball, really? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pretty good. One of my favourite. I haven't done that for a long time. It's, I think people are reverting to things that they haven't done for a long time. Getting out old board games, watching old TV programmes. Yes. Um, I'd be interested to know how much of the audience have been doing that. I'm sure they've been doing a lot. Um, it's interesting you're mentioning lovely Gavin and Stacey then, because um, yeah. my kids are now old enough to watch Gavin and Stacey. So we've been reliving that. They get very excited when they see my name on the telly. Um, hey. But it's good. It's good lockdown fodder, isn't it? So I hope. I hope. I would just like to say properly hello to everyone who's joined us, and I really hope that all of you are faring okay in these rather bemusing times. Um, we know it's it's not as easy for everybody, so um, I hope you're all taking care of yourselves. What can you tell us about the quick turnaround lockdown content that you have been commissioning rather rapidly and recently? Um, well. Everything happened, as you can imagine, incredibly quickly. We were sort of dealing, um, like everyone else, with kind of sharp exits from all the BBC buildings. And if I'm honest, those first four weeks, Chris, were they were a bit of a blur. And, and we were doing all those organisational things, but at the same time, people were immediately getting in touch to say, how can we help? What can we do? And obviously, you know, we're kids broadcasters so the first thing we were thinking about was you know how do we in the way that we do with everything make sense of what's going on in the world in an age-appropriate way for both the preschool audience and of course the six to twelves as well and, and we're very lucky because we've built really great relationships with so many people over the years what's fantastic I think about the department is that we've got really good people on standby as it were who 
honestly in a twinkling of an eye said look we can do this and I think a great example of that I think we've got a clip which we'll show in just a sec was both Dr Raj um, in Get Well mm. Soon was able to write a brilliant script which obviously without scaring the tiddlers um, but also just allowing parents to watch with them and explain and make sense of what was going because can you imagine you know your whole routine disrupted as you know, as a three or four year old, you can't see your granny, you can't see your friends. All of those things, I think, would have been so confusing for so many kids. And then, of course, for the slightly older age group, Operation Ouch, fantastic, um, Dr. Chris and Zand and Dr. Ronks, in a much more robust, um, much more energetic, slightly in your face um, Operation Ouch virus alert, which I think conformed a lot more to, you know, that age group's need for sort of slightly more robust and energetic information. So just to give everyone a flavour of, of those very, very initial early um, commissions, I think we've got a little clip of both those things. Dr. Ranch, if it's invisible, how do I fight something that I can't see? Well, if we all stay at home and keep washing our hands, then if we have any of those invisible germs, we won't pass them on to other people. Coronavirus. It's all we've heard and talked about for a while now, and that's because it's one of the largest viral pandemics in history. But remember, things will get better. Get better. There you go. So you can, you can see there that, um, as I say, quite different approaches for the age groups, but um, essentially reassurance. You know, you, you heard that at the end of the operation, actually, we've given you all this information, but things will be okay. Um, so, you know, that's a key part, I think, of our, our lockdown lineup that we want to obviously inform, entertain, but make sure that people are feeling comfortable and secure at the same time. Um, and then going on, Literally, I think the following week, um, we were deluged. We just had so many people. Um, it was lovely, actually, um, getting in touch, saying, what can we do to participate? Um, and I think a wide variety of ideas. Obviously, um, all of those were, were shows and productions that could be shot in a, a socially distanced fashion. So to some degree, they've got a lot of similarities because um, these were shot quite early on as I say, in terms of quarantine. Um, but we mobilised very quickly. I have to give a big, big shout out to all the commissioning editors, you know, our channel management team, business affairs, because I think what people forget, and, you know, if you're on YouTube, you can obviously just film yourself and post it up. If you're doing something for BBC, you have to go through, you know, the normal commissioning process, which can be quite arduous. We were trying to do quite a lot, um, you know, quite quickly so all of our teams the planners everyone in discovery you know everyone is mobilized um coped with all this while they've been sitting at home and i just think some of those shows that have come in have just been delightful actually and again this is a slightly longer clip everyone but it gives it's all because there's so many things we haven't put in and my team know that i will sit here in connection thinking oh we haven't put that in oh we haven't put that in but anyway this gives you a kind of 90 second whiz through some of the amazing content that people have turned around. Inside our home is where we stay. It's where we learn, it's where we play. Hello there. So you're stuck at home, but do not worry. There are still loads of epic things you can do. Can't see yourself at home. Consider yourself part of our family. Now, we've been spending a lot of time in our homes at the moment. Uh, what have you been up to? Can I just say, I'm having such a good time on my first ever Blue Peter. This is DIY Deadly, the show that's all about your wildlife, the animals that live on your patch. It's snuffling the camera. What's he like, eh? <laughs> you can even hear it snuffling. TMO can't go out today, but that's OK. There's lots of things that you can do at home. You should think about all the kinds of fun we'll have when we all go back to school. Today, I'm your celebrity supply teacher. We're not the only incredible sports star in the family. I am. I am. <laughs> Sometimes we need inspiration. 
and we just need to look around. What is your top tip to all the young people then for like staying motivated in this lockdown? Don't worry, don't get disarmed. I'm going to teach you a dance that's set in space. But before I do, make some space for our dance to take place. Welcome to the baby club at home and welcome to my home. Yes, and I, there's some really interesting, um, really interesting things there. Um, one of which, as you can see there, Mwaxi, who is um, our 39th Blue Peter presenter. And Mwaxi has done her debut show on Blue Peter from essentially a bedroom in her house. Um, it's a virtual introduction to her, her time on Blue Peter, which is extraordinary. And she did unbelievably well. Um, and I think the other interesting thing as well is you, you probably also saw quite a lot of famous faces um, out with our usual BBC, CBBC and CBBC stars. And this is the other thing that's happened in lockdown. One of those shows, Celebrity Supply Teacher, we're able to access all these amazing people like Jerry Hall Hallowell and Heston Blumenthal, you know, massive long list, which I think in ordinary circumstances, we probably wouldn't have got access to. So this crazy journey, I think, has thrown up a lot of negatives, as we know, but also some really interesting creative positives, too. Um, and I think that lineup, I have to say, was fantastic. So many thanks to all of you out there. Who contributed to that and thank you for your ongoing ideas that are that are coming in. Gary Cass has chimed in on uh, our uh, question and answer feed here. What is the best way to get a children's TV pitch document in front of an executive producer? Because I'm guessing things are changing by the minute. So if somebody does have a good idea, is it still the normal channels that people go down? Um, well, I would say, given that we've just announced Greg's arms and um, the <laughs> fact that people can socialise in a virtual way with Melissa, Michael and Sarah, um, in terms of the quickest way, I would go to the to Greg's arms and buy them a virtual pint um, yeah. and tell them about your idea. But the normal route is to go to our website um, and check out which of the commissioning editors um, is the most appropriate one for your idea. Also, make sure you read up um, on exactly the type of shows that we are already doing and the, th the type of things that we need um, and, and then get in touch with them. So all the details there. And I think actually, Joe, who is the brilliant technical wizard who's helping us on this, is gonna, I think, put the, the Commissioning White website email up um, at the end. Brilliant. Oh, there it, is. there it is, look at that. Right. I told you he was a, I told you he was a technical whiz. <laughs> but um and what I want to say Chris, was was just that, that that this this has been an extraordinary time in terms of how mm. quickly people have been turning around both audio visual content and also audio and I think you yourself have been very busy. I've noticed yeah. some emails coming from your website at about one and two o'clock in the morning because you've been doing a brilliant CBB's audio show for us called CBB's Magic Den and I have we got some, have we got a little clip of that that we can play everyone, do you think? We have a clip of some of the children who participated in the programme, so we've just got a couple of lines from them. CBB's Magic Den. Hello Chris, I'm Advik. In my magical den, I can make magic potions. Whatever I want will be in my magical den. When you wake up in the morning, something will happen. You're over the moon on your Given that you were in lockdown, when, I know you've made a lot, a load of programmes, but what, what were the challenges for you when you were making that show? I think, um, well, I was very, very lucky because I have this studio. You can't really see it all here. And I've been making quite a bit of radio with little radio. And my first job was at LBC. And, and then f I did a bit of Radio 5 and um, working um, in radio. So I it was a great opportunity and really I can't say more than that really it was a great opportunity because I had everything I needed and of course being given the opportunity to make um, 
effectively a radio drama um, was just wonderful. And, you know, so, yeah, it was a really great opportunity. And um, the imagination that's come from the contributors, we've done one with Dr. Ranj, who's, who's brilliant, um, and Maggie, um, presenter of CBB Stargazing, who's wonderful, and a load of other CBB stars. And, yeah, it's just been a, a wonderful opportunity. And we've hopefully just seen the positives in this piece of entertainment. Fantastic. Well, I'd advise everyone who's got little kids, and actually big kids, um, to make their way to CBB's radio to listen to it, and BBC Sounds as well. Yes. How has commissioning been affected, <laughs> Cheryl, ahead, you know, for 2020 and 21? Has, has that had a, a massive impact from coronavirus, and I, I suppose, in terms of TV? Well, that's the big, the big question. Um, essentially we've been we've been hammered i think um it's all been very difficult because obviously filming uh, especially with the more complex shows like you know the comedies and the dramas anything in studio have been totally compromised by this virus um and if i'm honest it's been quite painful um you know obviously for the indie community who had written all these wonderful quality shows and um you know uh, all ready to start filming this year um, and now all of their production plans um, are on hold um, and we are embedded in what is I think an unprecedented see I can say it um, an unprecedented scenario um, mm. in which we are assessing the slate trying to guess which shows who at the moment say they can film this year will actually be able to film this year at the same time as coping with many many productions across both cbb's and cbbc who said no that's it we can't we know we're not going to be able to film this year so now we want to go into next year's slate and we call that 20 year 21 22 and the right. problem for for us is that because for a lot of things because we know it takes a long time to commission kids content and especially if you're filming with kids we we tend to film it quite early we've already got a pile of shows in year 21 22 that we've committed to but now we've got all the shows from this year ringing up and saying can we have a slot next year as well and this is a really um kind of difficult scenario basically because i just don't think we can fit everyone in not least because it's highly possible as well that our budgets might be reduced you know you'll have heard um on the news and and if you've been you know kind of reading the, the trades that um, the BBC has got to find another 125 million on top of the 800 million that they've been trying to save in the last three years. So um, it's a tricky situation. And at the moment, we don't quite know what our financial scenario will be. So it's hard to plan and give the reassurance, which we're really desperate to give indies at this time because everyone's looking for reassurance it's not it's not just our audience it's obviously all the people who are making this quality content for them so that all of the teams who who help me um you know at bbc children's are all kind of doing as much as they can to sort the situation out and you know we're just thinking about various things so for example because we know that it's difficult to film content at the moment and we know that people won't be able to achieve the volume that they might have originally pitched at, um, that perhaps by reducing number of apps, so instead of delivering 12, maybe deliver eight or even six, um, make the filming process easier, especially if you've got young people. Um, because that's the other, the other issue, of course, until we start um, the production processes, we have no idea even with shows that are returning, where we've had kids, you know, whether that's Maori Towers, Four O'Clock Club, Dumping Ground, all these shows, you know, will their parents want them to come back and film? It could be that um, their parents and carers feel um, quite anxious about them going into a filming environment, even if we, as producers and commissioners, are confident that all the regulations and the guidance is being adhered to. So. As we go forward, as we're inching our way forward, um, I, I think all I can say to people, and I know I've been saying this a lot on, you know, both in our letters out to the inter community um, and in my calls to, to our various suppliers, is 
you can rest assured that the you know uppermost in our mind is is obviously sustaining our audience with as much quality content as we can but a very close second is doing absolutely as much as we can to make as many people as possible comfortable so we are going to try and help as many of our indie suppliers as we possibly can um, but it's going to be an iterative and rather slow process because um, I mean yeah generally the landscape seems to change every day so a question here from Victoria Stokely leading on from that with all the wonderful lockdown content being produced right now is now not a good time to pitch an idea for the future which can't be made at home I think there's there's two parts to that thank you for your question um, because of this, the syndrome that I've just outlined, which is effectively we're lifting and shifting all the shows that were already commissioned, all the hard work for this year into mm -hmm. next year. I think in terms of what we call business as usual shows, i.e. complex shows, shows that would be difficult you know, to shoot, um, it's going to be quite some time before we've got either the slots or the budget or indeed the headspace to some degree to think about those because it's going to take a while i think all this year we're going to be you know assessing reassessing the situation we'll be saying oh yes that's going to come in no it's not what else can we do um so i think in terms of those big shows the big business as usual shows um yes you're right it's it's probably not the best time to pitch those but as we go on um as I say, I think we will, you know, as shows get cancelled, for example, you know, because they can't be filmed to next year, we might be freeing up small pockets of money for more quick turnaround content. So I suspect that, you know, towards August or maybe September, we'll be able to look again and see if we freed up sufficient funds to have more quick turnaround content. And indeed, I hope, and I'm afraid because of, just because of the, rather precarious financial conversations that are going on at the moment um this isn't a confirmation but i'm really hoping we can find additional development funds so that people can at least start thinking about scripts and pilots and taster tapes for next year when and you know hopefully this happens you know um business as usual filming kind of picks up again Bella Tomlinson asks, will animation become more desirable to you or are you overrun with animated ideas? Well, the, the interesting thing um, about animation, I mean, we always love our animation. As you know, we've got an uh, absolutely fantastic array of acquired um, animation and um, commissioned animation from suppliers and uh, in-house as well. Um, because animation takes so long, the shows that we hope will be arriving next year and the next, the, the year after that, of course, are already commissioned. Now, I, it's possible, you know, and I hope this isn't the case to some degree, that if, you know, these kind of lockdown con conditions continue for eight months, a year, a year and a half, I mean, to some degree, we don't know, then yes, I suspect that the animation industry is, is um, you know, going to be in a strong position because we know that, many suppliers have been incredibly resourceful and hardworking and arranged for all of their designers and animators to work from home. Um, so yes, they're sort of slightly protected, aren't they, in, in that respect. But just at the moment, um, what I can tell you is that because we know we're not going to get all of the drama that we were expecting this year, we mm. have asked for a, a bigger, a slightly bigger acquisitions budget to buy off the shelf um, drama and comedy just to fill some of those gaps. Um, and that's great because it's always, you know, we, as you know, our, our, our big thing is, is reflecting the lives of UK kids um, wanting to support um, all of our homegrown um, industry um, and creativity. But right at the moment, um, to, in order to fill some of those gaps, we will have to rely on a couple of series um, from the rest of the world. The best of the rest, as we like to yeah. call it. But given the reduced impact on animation right now, does that mean that animated shows do stand a better chance of being commissioned um, in 21-22? Um, not, not in so many words. It's a complex scenario. I think 
partly because they can be very expensive. Um, yeah. I think if, if it was short form and they were economical, then possibly if we knew we could rely on production. Um, but it's always useful to remember that we have our Ofcom quotas um, and essentially those are about live action shows. Um, it's one of the, you know, our USPs, obviously, that we don't have a, you know, a massive percentage of, of animated shows on the channels. We have to achieve a certain amount of, of live action. So that will always be, in a sense, nice. one of our guiding principles. Um, so, you know, as I say, we're, we love animation. It's, it, it, we're always um, keen to support UK animators, especially. So in as much as we can, we will be commissioning as much as we can across all genres but i i have to say that although on paper it sounds as though the animators um might be in with a better chance i think in practice it it, it will be business as usual in terms of those quotas right thank you because i think that answers laura robinson and becky overton's questions one now from Chris Douch. Once some normality returns, what Corona era content on sensibilities would you like to continue? Could you repeat that? I'm not sure I understood. I that. think what he's asking is, you know, are there things that are happening now? I think you, you answered it slightly earlier when you're talking about, you know, Zoom meetings and, and, and everything. But is there anything practices and also things that are being commissioned? Is there anything, any ways of going about business that you would like to see carry on after um, the corona has, has disappeared or calmed down? Thank you, thank you. I, I got thrown by the word sensibilities and for some reason thought mindfulness, but um, we can come on to mindfulness. Um, yes, I, I, I know that a lot of businesses, obviously, just in terms of the way that they operate, have been talking about that, um, you know, in, in terms of, how many people do you need in the office and how often every week, etc. cetera. Um, but just what I've been um, impressed by, and, and as I say, we're always trying to find the positives in this, this rather strange uh, landscape, is that people have been so excited about the quick turnaround content because it doesn't take as long as the normal content. Um, you know, so whether it's, you know, Melissa, you know, one of our commission executives working with Steve Baxchel at the moment, who's doing um, a DIY deadly from his backyard, basically. And, and so you start talking about it one week and then a fortnight later, you're already editing it and, um, you know, talking about it and seeing it going up on iPlayer, which, which is fantastic. And I, I was speaking to Helen Buller as well in in-house and she's got a brilliant producer called Edwin who's been looking after Celebrity Supply Teacher. And Edwin, I think, was twiddling his thumbs just before lockdown. And then suddenly it all happened and they pitched this idea. And as I was mentioning before, one of the great tropes about lockdown in terms of talent is that you have got access to people that you might not normally have access. So suddenly, as I say, you know, she was telling me that Edwin was really excited because now he's got Jerry Halliwell, you know, on his phone and, and all these other exciting people. So I think that, that immediacy um, and, and also, that self-expression. Um, Michael Towner sent me um, some great Mr. Maker um, quick turnaround shows just last night. And you could just see, um, you know, how excited he was about doing this and, and, and bringing in his friends on Zoom, Andy Day and Maddie Moat. Um, and I just think that ability to, to do things from home and in a sense have complete creative control I suspect that a lot of our creatives, you know, writers and performers have really enjoyed that. And, and it made me think when I, you know, we've also got some great Mr. Tumble um, uh, stuff coming down the line as well. And that's been shot. Um, Justin's got a green screen in his house. So he's been doing Mr. Tumble at home from his, his home. And they've been shooting it through the kitchen window. Now, you know, Justin, I'm sure, lives in a lovely place, um, you know, away from, far from the madding crowd. And I bet he's probably loved that, rather than having to trek up to Salford and film in his studio, a hot studio, and, you know, go through makeup and all this. He's just done it himself, and it's taken half the time, and um, the results have been amazing. So, um, and similarly, I just want to mention, um, in, in terms of, you know, bedtime stories as well, the way they've been kind of filming those and we did five with Tom Hardy who just sat outside by his rhododendron bush and um, the camera crew were just at the other end of the garden <laughs> so again he didn't have to go anywhere so I think all of those little production 
elements will be quite interesting to see you know can we continue with those not least because they are also lower cost although I'm sure as the Indian community you don't want to think about that side of it um, but that immediacy I think has been um, it's been really positive actually a real boom for everyone. Have you had any sort of measure of success for all this uh, turnaround, quick turnaround content? Have you, um, oh, this is a, a question from Kate Finn. How have the audiences reacted to the content and have they interacted differently to it than they normally would? Um, well, yes. I mean, for, for example, we know that um, the Dr. Raj and Operation Out specials that you saw clips of have gone down exceptionally well. Um, in general, and, and this is, I think, a wonderful thing, you know, for audiences, but also for the BBC, um, we've had a, a essentially double, double the traffic on iPlayer um, across all the weeks of lockdown. And I think, um, you know, that content, which, which people, partly because it's trusted faces, um, that people are drawn to. So we, we were really, really, grateful that people like Andy Day, Maddie, as I say, Mr. Maker, Justin, um, the doctors across the board, basically, that they stepped up to the plate. Because I think for parents in particular, for the preschoolers, to see those faces on the iPlayer and know that there is content um, that can, you know, entertain and inform their kids at this time um, has been unbelievably valuable for them. They're very grateful. And the, and the numbers absolutely have have um underlined that sure i'm not sure whether you've answered this or not really but um will this is from terry sandy will the autumn commissioning round be cancelled will it be completely got rid of you've already said that pitches that were done in february are waiting a decision and have said there mm -hmm. is a battle for slots so what's battle the situation there? yes i think essentially in any um any shape that we would recognize it yes it will um and the i think the earliest probably will be commissioning as i say business as usual type shows will be in january however the upside um of all this movement is that i think pockets as i mentioned pockets will open up along the way so obviously if you've got a great idea um, you know that you think you can film um, and be physically distanced from people then you know do do send those in um, we'll be sending out um, at some point I think in the next month um, a kind of revised editorial spec of the type of things that that might be useful um, so not not a not a business as usual commissioning round but but little moments I think windows um, of opportunity yeah and in terms of how programmes are made and how directors, producers, production staff are going about, not just the presenters, but the production staff, you, you were saying that um, to me earlier before that um, they've come up with some incredible um, aids to pass on to presenters at home for self-shooting yes. with storyboards and goodness knows what. Yeah, it's... Um... And it's interesting, the people, because sometimes we've got quite similar shows and some people said, oh, no, we don't want to. We don't want to carry on with production. We would rather wait. And, and um, we started an initiative before Christmas um, where we put out a call for monologues, um, which were going to be exclusive to iPlayer. And this was, was you know, for the, for the older end, probably really for sort of 12 to 16s. But these are a great opportunity to have 10 minute monologues that were written by new diverse writers, um, produced and directed by young and relatively inexperienced producers and directors um, so that they could, you know, have an opportunity on something quite short to experiment and, and learn their craft. And, um, and a couple of them um, do want to shoot the monologues. Um, there's one called The Birth of Venus. And, and um, I was just being shown the other day on one of our endless Zoom meetings um, that the director, who's called um, Teresa Varga, because she, has a real vision for this monologue and, and, 
and yet can't be in the room with her performer. She'll be doing it on the day, you know, using earpieces and phones. What she created for the team was this really elaborate, um, fantastic set of mood boards and storyboards, which could inform everyone about exactly how she saw it because she was just going to be you know, a little hampered in how she expressed that to them personally. And I think um, if Joe is there, I think he can show yeah. us some of Teresa's work. I mean, she's so creative. It's amazing this. And um, so this is the Venus vlog storyboard. And as I say, this is the director, Teresa, who's done this. And if we could just swipe on there, guys. But you can see in terms of the, this is just all for one, one 10 minute monologue. Um, in terms of the style and and the design that she wants. And we can scroll on again. There's just so much detail there, you know. Um, it's really fantastic. I just wanted to mention that as well, because again, normally, especially as I say for monologue, we wouldn't necessarily see that much detail. Um, but this situation um, has engendered a slightly different way of doing things. Have we got another question? Yeah, we've got a question here from Kate Finn, actually, following from what you were just saying a moment ago about, you know, the success of uh, what's been going on with the lockdown production. Um, she says, after lockdown, will their low cost, fast turnaround content continue to be a feature of the CBeebies brand, given its success? Yes, um, I think absolutely. I mean, as as you know, um, you know, our, our mission is to create you know, high quality, fantastic content that kids will fall in love with. Um, but given the quality of the shows that have been coming in, I see no reason why why they don't fall into that category. And um, they are really high quality. They're certainly entertaining and they're informative. Um, and I think the audience are loving them. So yes, is the answer to that. Angela Salt asks, um, read the call outs that you mentioned a moment ago for a specific wish list that you might have, where will those be available, please? Well, we send out um, a regular email from the indie team, um, Jack Fuchs, who is amazing at keeping us all on the straight and narrow, pulls that together. And mm. if you go again to the, CB, the CBBs and CBBC commissioning website, there's a, somewhere in there it says, if you wish to be added to our mail list, um, please contact Jack at this address. Um, so, um, if you go to that website and again, it may come up again, cause I think we've got a link to it, but, um, go and have a look at the website and you'll see Jack's address, get yourself on the list and then you can hear all about what we're up to and what we're after. Quick question from Tony Humphreys now, would you acquire shows previously shown on other UK broadcasters as well as from overseas? We've um, always done that, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. So it depends what it is, obviously, and, and how it fits in, um, you know, with the menu of other content that we're acquiring. But um, if you if you get in contact with Sarah Muller in the Greg's Arms, as we yeah. called it, the virtual pub after the session, you could talk to her about that. Jotty, Jotty asks, sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, rattling through yeah. them now, Cheryl, because we're running Go out of time. It. Go for it. Jotty asks, what things do you keep in mind while commissioning content for children? Mum. Um, many things. Um, you know, I, I think everyone in children's takes our role really seriously because, um, you know, w we want children and their families to have a, a really meaningful and, and lifelong relationship with the BBC. And it starts with us. So, you know, first and foremost, we want all of that content to be very high quality. Um, but there's there's so many things that, that we think about. Um, you know, we've got this great phrase for CBeebies, which is lighting up little learners, which is a lovely phrase because it essentially suggests inspiration. You're lighting them up, but they're also learning. Um, they want to learn through play. They want to learn through seeing characters interact, you know, all of those things. And, so, you know, moving on to, to CBBC, um, you know, we want kids as they take their first steps in the world to feel confident about themselves. We want them to feel good and we want them to feel informed. Um, so across all of our content, and you know, it is multi-genre, that's the amazing thing about it. There are all these qualities that we want invested in that 
content. Um, and and again, I think it, it, it's those qualities, that public service spine that runs through our content, you know, helping kids to laugh while they learn, or as I say, lighting up little learners, that, mm. that helps distinguish us from other broadcasters. And, and again, if you go to the website, you'll, you'll see quite a lot more detail about how those qualities kind of fit into different genres, whether that's inspiring drama or great factual and fact end that's that's inspiring because we've employed amazing role models people at the top of the game like chris here for example who are able to to you know in, inspire kids and 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 feel really relatable so again have a look at the website because as i say we've we spent quite a lot of time um you know articulating exactly what makes a great cbbs or cbb show Nice question in from Sarah Cox at Ardman. Is there a show or concept that you've passed on that you wish you'd commissioned? Um, yes, Hilda. Hilda. Um, I had long chats about that. It was, I think it was quite expensive. We ummed and ahed about right. it. And it's done really well. It's beautifully made. Um, so yes, I could say Hilda. I'm sure there are others that, I'm too embarrassed to talk about because, you know, it's embarrassing. But yeah, certainly Hilda was one I regret that we didn't pick up. Oliver Ellis asks, what makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Um, <laughs> God, so many things. I, I hope I've got a really good sense of humour. Um, and at the moment, things that make me laugh are the fact that my daughter refuses to get out of bed till 2pm. The fact that my son screams murder and death when he's playing Fortnite across so many of my Zoom meetings. And I'm from a Quaker family, so that's both makes me laugh, but also makes me very embarrassed. Um, and I have to say that across all our content, I know you'd expect me to say this, there are so many funny things, so many funny shows, um, really beautifully written comedy, really great knockabout comedy. Um, Kiwi and Lou, I must mention that. That, In terms of lockdown, that's a show that so many people have gravitated to. And it's got Jermaine from uh, Flight of the Concord doing one of the voices. And it's, it's hilarious. It's absolutely fantastic. So um, my hot tip for anyone who wants to have a lovely and amusing afternoon is to go and binge, binge watch Kiwi and Lou. Okay. I've got one more question here from uh, now more than ever high quality programming from our uh, for our children is essential for their well-being and development. Does the BBC plan to increase its spend in children's as a result of the pandemic? Well, I hope so. That one in. I, I really hope so. You know, what, what I was saying before about children's being the start of the BBC journey, um, I really stand by that and you know I, I know everyone's heard a lot about that how important and, and, and how appreciated the BBC has been during this time and that and I think you know that's fantastic I know it's a, it is a difficult time for, for a lot of people but it, it is I think self-evident that a public service broadcaster um, is needed and appreciated and you know young people need to be treated in the same way as adults and they need fantastic quality shows that are well funded um, and we need to support the creative industries in this country because it's one of the things that again that that is USP of the UK um, so across the board um, you know that takes money and um, I sincerely hope that when when Tony talks about you know more money for youth audiences that he doesn't just mean the 16, 16 pluses because um you know there's a, a absolutely fantastic naught to 16 audience um who deserve great content as well right a big thank you to carrie alone from finger industries for asking that question before we'd even started um jason mitchell <laughs> asks will you be commissioning more content for teens um Going back to my previous answer, I really hope so. We've, we've, we've had um, some lovely, lovely things in for teens. And again, you know, those of you who've been to our briefing days know that we were really keen to address that gap. You know, there's a service license gap basically between the top end of CBBC and BBC3. And all of those rites of passage moments and coming of age stories 
um, you know, that we know kids really benefit from. We didn't feel that that we were offering that up to to that audience. So, um, you know, we've had a whole host of shows involving, you know, Stacey Dooley's The 9 to 5, uh, lovely Mimi Misfits with her sex education. At the moment, by the way, she is doing, she's knocking it out the park with a, a lockdown special, which is exclusive to iPlayer. So to check that out as well. Um, but across the board, whether it's drama, you know, Get Even, as I say, um, and also some fantastic audio that you can hear as well that again, you know, addresses self-image, um, sex education, all of those important things. Um, we've really enjoyed doing that. We do think it fit, fills that gap and we will be lobbying for more funds. At the moment, we don't have them, um, but we will be lobbying. And before we go, Cheryl, is there anything else you want to add to everything you've already said already that would be words of reassurance to everyone who's producing great content for children? Um, uh, only to repeat some of the things I've said, actually, Chris, which is that, it, it, you know, it's, n it's never been more important, um, I think, um, to create quality content for young audiences and we will do as much as we can to preserve the great ideas that at the, the moment are in this rather bizarre and complex holding pass pattern um, we will do as much as we can to find you development money and we will do as much as we can to increase the spend on quick turnaround content if we can um, we're incredibly appreciative for all the creativity um, and the goodwill actually and the caring um, that has gone on during this um, last three months. It's kind of, you know, been been humbling, actually. Um, we care very much about what you do. The audience love what you do, and they are very appreciative. Um, and hopefully we can all work together um, to keep it all going. So, so thank you. This is the fantastic independent commissioning team for Nought 16s that we've been mentioning. Um, and again, you'll see this on the commissioning website. And Melissa and Michael from this team, as I say, will be in the Greg's arms or the, the Facebook virtual bar. And not forgetting the illustrious and glamorous acquisitions team, acquisitions and independent animation. Um, and Sarah, I think, will also be available to answer questions in the virtual bar. And, and can I just say a big thanks to those guys, because I can't tell you, uh, along with everyone else at the, at the channels, they've been you know, I've never seen people work so hard. They've been amazing. So thank you, team. And thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gerald.